This is a quick video demonstrating a repair to this Roland Cube 30X. The fault in this case seems to be with the selector switch here and normally we would turn this to select different amp models. In our case all we get from this is one consistent almost clean kind of tone, it's not selecting different amp models and um, there's a repair for this which is documented in a few places online but I haven't seen any videos of it yet so uh, hopefully this will be of some assistance to people and uh, the switch is an unusual one and therefore what we're going to do is take the switch out, desolder it, have a go at repairing the switch's internals so um, fixing the wiper back in position so that the, uh, uh, the contact is properly made when we turn the selector switch so to begin with repair we're going to need to uh, get access to the amps internals and that's done by undoing screws here and here on the handle and also here, here and here. And with a bit of luck we should now be able to draw this whole unit which contains the internals for the amplifier. And we just need to disconnect the speaker wires here so that we can get it free. Amplifier uh, removed we can see we've got the 9 position switch here which is on this board. You can see the contacts for it here. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is going to start by removing this board here going to undo these cable ties here, Let's just snip through those, disconnect these, doesn't look like you can mess them up too much when you reinsert them, and then we'll undo the uh, mounting screws here, remove this whole board, and we'll desolder that outside of the amplifier. So I've now magically removed those uh, cable ties and the screws for the uh, mounting posts here. So the other thing that we have to do is up top our knobs have to come off and um, the uh, the nuts that are on top. The only tricky one is this middle one for the selector switch and because it's got this little stop here you just need something open-ended for that one otherwise a long socket will do the rest of them. That's now free, just a little gentle wriggling to pull it apart and you can see there the nine-way selector and the nine contacts for it on the underneath. So we've relocated to the bench for this next part and the tools that we're going to need here are a soldering iron with a reasonably dainty tip, uh, some solder, and this is sold for uh, quadcopter use, so it's it's fancy solder, but it's pretty nice stuff. Uh, and uh, also a desoldering pump. And a sponge off to the side. Skip to the end and uh, we've now got this chap removed with relatively little destruction. Uh, there's no, uh, no pads or traces damage that we can see. Um, all the pins are intact on here. So the next job is going to be to uh, lever up those four little tabs that are on the corners of this switch and um, we'll have a look if we can get inside. Um, you can see that as I expected, this uh, this little wiper is floating around. It should be retained on two little plastic nubs in there, but they appear to have deteriorated over time. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, clean the whole lot up. Um, just um, drop of uh, of isopropyl or rubbing alcohol to uh, to clean off the grease that's in there, and then we're going to get some. Uh, Epoxy adhesive, some aldite, and a couple of tiny little bobs of aldite. Try and retain that where it's supposed to be, um, remembering to have it in the right place first, um, and then have a go at reassembling the switch. So uh, that that might going to be quite boring to film, I think. So we'll uh, we'll see where we get to. So I finally, summed up the courage to blob some aldite onto the little guy, and that's looking pretty good now. 
Uh, slight correction to what I've been saying all along. This is not, of course, a nine position switch, but an eight position switch. Um, and when you are counting, to make sure you've got it positioned correctly for the stops, don't forget the one. So um, you should be making seven um, from your start position. Uh, seven little clicks round. And there's a couple of stops there and a, and a little um, pip on the metal housing that need to be um, positioned correctly um, for when we reassemble. But uh, for the purposes of getting it to make contact, um, then uh, we just followed where it was located before, where those two little bits of plastic are sheared off. And that Araldite should uh, cure pretty quickly, but to give us maximum chance of survival, I think what we'll do is we'll call that it for tonight and uh, then we'll get back to it in the morning and uh, reassemble the switch, get it back inside the amplifier and uh, solder it up again. So what I'm just doing here is that these uh, two outer pins connect to the, um, the ring that goes around the outside of the switch and these are for each of the eight positions, so we've got four on each side. I'm just going to go through, check that we've got some continuity in that position, then we'll click it round and now this end pin should connect not to the second one, but to the third one there. And uh, same for the fourth pin. Excuse the lead of my probes getting in the way there. I'll uh, get that out of the way. And that looks to be working. I'll uh, just finish working my way around. So now I've uh, got the iron warmed up again, and uh, time to uh, time to get this stuck in. Maybe not quite warmed up enough yet. Not for those big ones anyway, that'll be fine for the little ones. That's all installed again, renewed the cable ties that we had there just to uh, avoid anything pulling out. Um, the nuts are back on the top and you can see the uh, thing that I mentioned earlier when we were disassembling it. Just this little pip here prevents you from being able to, uh, to get a socket down on it. So you just need something open ended to work that nut. Um, the others you can just do them with a socket in your fingers. Um, yeah, and this is about ready to go back in. Oh, one thing to watch out for when you're reassembling is there is this little spacer ring there that sits on the um, on the switch and that's necessary when you uh, manoeuvre it into place you'll see that the switch is otherwise slightly lower than the other pots so um, in order to stop any uh, any force being on that make sure it's nice and clamped up tight not putting strain on the board um, just need really to remember to put that one on there <laughs> One month later. Oh. So it didn't work, and um, it's now twenty twenty two, but. Um, I think I've still got a pretty good idea what's going on here because where when I was testing this originally we had continuity um, the switch was actually working you could rotate it and each of these pins in turn would um, connect to the common uh, now that it's in situ it's not doing that so I'm gonna have a go at first of all taking the switch apart again that wiper that we've got 
Um, I think it might just be too flattened out, so it's not making good contact. And when I first assembled the switch, it obviously was working. And just the trauma of putting it back in has meant that it's not making contact. So I'm going to have a go at desoldering that switch, bend the fingers back so that they hopefully press a bit harder against the track and each of the uh, the contacts around the, the radius. And um, yeah, see if that works. Worst case scenario, I think what I can probably still do is jump a couple of these if the switch is completely dead. And um, then we'll have a fixed lead channel that's just using one of the models. So we're apart again, and slightly frustratingly, I can see that what's happened here is that it's not, the, the wiper has not actually sat down. And it looks like it must have moved when the epoxy was wet, which is a bit strange because it did appear to be working when I was testing it, but it was obviously not fixed properly in place now. Yeah, had another crack at that. So it's sitting down again, and it's glued. It's glued, I don't know, possibly worse than it was before. After letting it set again, I'm still not really satisfied with this. So what I have actually done in the meantime is I've managed to get a replacement from RS and I'll link this one down below. Um, it's not the same, but it appears to do the same trick. What it does have is a slightly shorter shaft on it, but I hope that's not relevant. I think there is a long shaft version of this, but I didn't see it on the RS website. It exists on the data sheet. I'm not sure if you can get it in reality, but rather than spend more time searching for it, just thought I would grab this one. And it does fit. It just means the knob sits a little bit flusher on this than it does on uh, the other pots or on the original uh, rotary. So back with the iron and uh, time to get uh, this guy soldered on again. <laughs> So it's fixed, um, and what do we learn from this in terms of lessons? Um, well, that switch is kind of crappy, and it's a shame to own equipment that has that sort of thing in it, but that is modern consumer grade electronics. So yeah, um, I think the lesson for us, as, or for me as a repairer, is an old one, which is don't repair um at a component level if you uh if you don't have to so getting a replacement switch obviously uh sorted us out it was a heck of a lot easier possibly should have just spent the money in the first place rather than trying to glue the old one back together um rather sad for the fact that probably this is a common fault on rolling cubes and the vast majority of them where that tiny little piece of plastic fails and those two little metal fingers go floating around inside the switch vast majority of those rolling cubes would have ended up in landfill or on slow boat back to china to have the parts cooked out of them by small children over stoves so that's kind of sad um i mean it, behind me is is the kind of main rig which yeah is a very different sort of appliance um there's no components in that oh, i mean it's a modern valve amp so it's got pcb and stuff like that in it but there's there's nothing in there which is going to fail or be hard to source, um, saving however many years it takes for them to stop making valves altogether. Um, but yeah, that's a very different attitude to repair, isn't it? I'm rather sad, but it's uh, back in action. It's going to work okay for me as backup or whenever somebody's round, there's an extra thing to plug into, which is nice. Sounds okay. Um, yeah, jobs are good. Thanks, guys.